Number 75. Assume that the change in concentration of COCl2 is small enough to be neglected in the following problem. And then we have letter A. So they say, calculate the equilibrium concentration of all species in an equilibrium mixture that results from the decomposition of COCl2 with an initial concentration of 0.3166 molarity. Then they give us a equation with the corresponding Kc value. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this equation a little bit bigger. As I'm writing this, I don't see any coefficients. So while I'm writing this out, I'm just making sure that it's balanced. Remember, we always have to start with a balanced equation. So anytime that they give you an equation, just make sure that, you know, it's a balanced one. But I'm looking at this and it looks pretty good to me. So we're going to go straight from here. Now, we need to find all of the equilibrium concentrations. And they said of all species, which basically means all of the compounds or the molecules in the balanced equation. Now they did say that we are starting with, because I see the word initial, so I have an initial concentration of 0.3166 molarity of the COCl2. Whenever they give you an initial concentration or a starting concentration, and you're in the equilibrium chapter, we're doing an ice table. So I like to just write I C E. Some teachers teach it as the rice table. The R stands for the reaction, but I don't, we don't really need the R, right? We just write the balance equation and then we put I C E. Okay, so start with the I. I stands for initial. All of your initial concentrations. Remember, Technically, only concentration or pressure values, ATM, should be in here. So we're only looking for molarity, but they gave me an initial concentration, so we're good to go. So they told us that initially, we started with 0.3166 molarity of the COCl2. That's this one over here, right? So I'm just going to put uh, 0.3166. You could put the M if you want, but usually in my ice table, I don't like to write the units. I just make sure that it's in molarity before I put it in. Now let's figure out the initial concentrations of the products, right? So what numbers are we going to use for CO and Cl2? Well, did they say that we started off with any of this? No, they just said that, you know, we were decomposing ClCl2, and that was the only thing that had an initial concentration. So we didn't start with these. So, zero and zero. Now comes the C. C stands for change. And this is the change in concentration from initial all the way down to your equilibrium, which would be E. Now... Always look at the zeros, guys. You can't go lower than what you don't have, right? There's no such thing as a negative molarity. You could only go up from here. So I know that I have to change in the positive direction. In this case, I have to add, right? These molarities are going up. So this side would be plus, and then that means that the reactant side would be minus. But do we know how much change there is? No. So that's where we add the x values. Since we don't know what the change is from initial to equilibrium, I'm just going to label that as x. So I would say this is minus x, plus x, and plus x. Now just keep in mind that you have to follow the coefficients when you're working with your x values. But since these were all ones, right? These were all ones, this would be minus 1x, which is the same thing as minus x, plus 1x, and then plus 1x. But we don't write the 1 when we write the x's. Now E stands for equilibrium. And all we're doing here is we're just combining the I and the C. So at equilibrium, it's just your initial and the change. So in this case, it would just be 0. 3166 and then minus the x value, right? So coming over here, it would be 0 plus x, which is basically just x, and the same thing here, x. Now we have our equilibrium values, right, in terms of variables and a number. 
this is the only line that goes into the KC formula. We've seen the KC formula time and time again, right? It's the general formula of this. KC just equals concentration of products divided by the reactants. And remember, only aqueous and gases are allowed in the formula. But we look like we have all gases here, so all of them are going to be included. So let's just write out the formula that we got going on here. So KC equals the concentration of, I'm going to do the products first. I have two of them. Remember, they're going to be multiplied in the, uh, the equation. So CO, box that off, raised to the coefficients, but there was only one. So I could write to the first, but I don't have to. And then this would be the concentration of Cl2. Close that up. Raised to the first because there was one of them, but, you know, that's okay. And then we go down to the denominator. This would be the concentration of Co, Cl2. Close that bracket. Raised to the first because there was one. And now we're ready to rock and roll. However... They did say that we're going to assume that the change in the concentration of COCl2 to be so small that it's going to be neglected. What does that mean? That means that this change, this X value, technically is going to be such a small number, maybe something times 10 to the negative 11th. If you subtracted 0.3166 minus something so, 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 so small, your answer would roughly come out to be the same number. If that's the case, we can make it easy on ourselves and we can neglect this change, but only for the reactant. We cannot change any of the X's here because we have to have the variable somewhere in the equation. We can do that because the KC value is so small. Remember what KC values mean that are less than 1. This is way less than 1. And remember, KC values less than 1 means that at equilibrium, you have majoritively reactants. So that's why this number is not going to go anywhere. If you started with you know, a reactant and you end with the reactant majority of it, that number shouldn't really change. So we just do this for simplicity purposes so that it makes it easy for us when we do the math. So let's see. Now let's plug it in. So I got X values, right? This was X and this was X. So X times another X. And then I can just put in the 0.3166. And they did tell me the KC value, right? The KC value was this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this a little bit, get rid of this, and actually plug that number in, 2.2 times 10 to the negative 10th. And now we can solve for the X, right? X times X is just X squared, and this we're basically cross-multiplying. So Calc-E's out. Let's see what we get. So I'm going to try not to round here because this isn't the... Final answer, but I get 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 10 times 0.3166. I get, I'll put it up here. Um, we have x squared, right? Because x times x equals x squared. And this equals 6.9652 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then in order to undo the square, sorry guys, my voice is like going in and out. but I'm a little sick here. But um, we've got to get these videos done. So let's keep going. Remember, you got to undo this square by square rooting, right? And you got to be fair. If you do that on one side, you got to do it on the other side. This will cancel out the square, and you're left with just the x value. And let's see what we get. The x is equal to the square root of that number. Now I'm going to round. Looks like maybe I'll do two sig figs because I had two sig figs in my KC value. So maybe I'll say 8.3 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, and remember, that's molarity. Now that's the X value. 
Now we always have to go back to our equilibrium line, our E line, to see if we just answered the question. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this uh, just for, you know, uh, space in the video. So if you do need to write this down, just, you know, pause the video, but it's all going. Bye bye. All right. So we had three different things at equilibrium, right? We had the COCl2, we had the CO, and we have the Cl2. So at equilibrium, the concentration of the COCl2 was 0.3166 minus X. When you are figuring out your concentration, now we bring back the X value. The concentration of CO was just X, and the concentration of Cl2 was just X. So for the bottom two, since it was just X and X, and X was equal to 8.3 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity, I already know what those concentrations were. So I know that the concentration of CO and Cl2 are both 8.3 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. But now I'm going to have to do subtraction because I need to do this to find out that answer. So it would be 0 0.3166 minus the answer that we got, 8.3 times 10 to the negative sixth, and that would be the final molarity for the Cl2. So let's see, 0 0.3166 minus 8.3 times 10 to the negative sixth, and for this one, I'm just going to give the placeholders that were in the first question. So this would essentially be 0 0.3166. So look at that, guys. Even with the subtraction, we get the same amount that we started with. So here's the concentration of COCl2. It's the same in which we started with. The concentration of CO was the X value. And the concentration of the Cl2 is also the X value. So that's all the answers for A. Now for B, it says just confirm that the change is small enough to be neglected. Basically, how do we find out that we are allowed to uh, use this uh, technique where we can just get rid of the X's and make it easy for ourselves? Now this is teacher or professor specific. Your teacher or professor might want you to do it a specific way uh, to just... Uh, neglect the X's. So I would always ask them first. There are a lot of different ways to do this. That's why. So one of the ways is there's like a 10 to the negative uh, fifth rule. Basically, if your KC value is times 10 to the negative fifth or smaller, as you can see here, 10 to the negative 10th is smaller than 10 to the negative fifth. You can neglect all of your X's in your initials. But basically it comes down to this. Since there was absolutely no change from your initial to your equilibrium value, you can get rid of that X value. It was so, 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 so small that the difference between the two is nothing. There's also a 5% rule in which you take your X value and you divide it by the initial uh, concentration. So quickly, if I just do this rule, 8.6 times 10 to the negative 6 over 0 0.3166 times 100, the rule is that this has to be 5% or less. And if I just do this quickly, I get, yeah, I don't even get 1%. So you're good with that as well. So that one is just, you know, teacher specific or professor specific of just how they want you to, you know, find the rule to neglect X. Okay. Okie dokie. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Uh, if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. And I, I hope you guys are doing well out there, right? Uh, let's keep studying hard and I hope to see you in later lessons. Okie dokie. Bye-bye.